falls over. And then right before the film cuts out and that's the end of the tape, you hear Phil go, That last scene was horrible! Of course. <laughs> Woof. Welcome back, travelers, to Wizards and Warriors. Meanwhile, Olivia's over here like, Hey, I'm in the wrong game! <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is a big castle! She's like, these guys are scary! <laughs> the one time I was recording by myself and I missed you, so I did Olivia's <laughs> voice. Olivia's voice. <laughs> wow, this is an interesting <laughs> island! <laughs> I'm like, it's not the same! <laughs> I can't play Paper Mario without her! I can play any other game, because it's just like, meh, it's just you know, another game, oh, but... Oh, Olivia. Paper Mario's not the same without your Olivia voice. Wow. <laughs> this is really big. I'm gonna play Paper Mario in a couple years and be like, Honey, come here! Apparently I'll sound like <laughs> a miser in a couple years. <laughs> Honey, come here! Do my, do the Olivia do the, voice! Do the voice! <laughs> do the Olivia voice! I'm just slowly morphing into Olivia. Just... <laughs> More and more every single day. Oh, I imagine when you're older, you have like the little, like, yellow the dress yellow and a wheelchair dress. and like the, <laughs> the little, little cap. Hair. Yep, the little <laughs> flippy cap. <laughs> just like, hey, hey everyone, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is the final battle with the wizard Mal Kill. Ooh. He's going to teleport all over the place and just fire spells at you. He my goes really fast, and this area is actually quite big. Wizard, my kill indigestion with that Pepto Bismol pink. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the f the final boss is a big pink wizard. How about that? It's <laughs> a big pink wizard. <laughs> ha ha! I'm casting the gay upon you. Aww. <laughs> Did you know pink was a man's color? Ah, uh, okay. It, it was originally intended for men. Okay. And blue was originally intended for girls. Interesting. Well, that makes a lot of sense because my sister is obsessed with blue. Well, like, I mean, it's honestly, so how did it I, th get I think the whole gender color thing is stupid to begin well, I agree. with. It's a color. Yeah, it's a color at the but, end of the day. Besides, um, in the 19th, Kirby rocks pink. Yeah. In the 1930s and 40s, pink was a man's color because it derived from red, which was a power color. It was strong and okay, um, vibrant, and blue was very delicate. It was very like yeah, cool and calm. yeah, it was very calming, very delicate. So it was pink was for boys because mm -hmm. it was a strong, and vibrant color, and then blue was very calm and very delicate. So it was meant for little girls. All right. And then I don't remember what happened that the colors were inverted. Yeah, because um, like I know, growing up in the '90s, like oh, yeah. blue was pink, a boy's pink color. Pink was for girls. Blue Little was blue for boys. boys, and like my sister resented that. I she mean, was just like, I want blue. I, I want feel, blue. I feel like most little girls go through like, the I hate green. pink phase. You know. I remember, like... My sister's still in that I hate fifth, pink Fifth phase. and sixth grade, like, I hated pink. Like, I despised it. I wanted nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. And my entire bedroom was baby pink oh. with bright pink trimming. See, my sister's bedroom and it was, was like, purple. It had Minnie Mouse everywhere because it was a nursery. Oh, okay. Like, so, and then I didn't get to paint my room until I was older. I get the feeling this area is just a bit too big. <laughs> Like, he can teleport all over the damn place, and I'm just like, well, where the hell is he? Yeah. Where'd he go? And his spells are just like, gotcha! And he's like, oh, there he is! But... Now I don't mind pink. I mean... Okay, maybe if I just stand in this spot and wait for him to come to me. Yeah? Let him come to you! Don't go to the evil wizard. Let the evil wizard come to you. <laughs> That's the ticket. Oh, sure! It's below you. Just... He's well, like, I'm gonna undermine he's your He's much faster than me. Like, by the time I'm, I run down there, he's like, whoop, I'm gone. Well, not only is he faster, but look at how much more life he has than you. Yeah. He has a lot more health. He's like, I'm faster. I'm stronger. I'm overall better. Like, I'm older, smarter, and prettier than you. <laughs> he's Angelica Pickles. The evil wizard Angelica. I am big and you are small. I am right and you are wrong. Poor Matilda. Oh, that's right. I'm big, you're small. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm right, you're wrong. Isn't it true that, like, um, Danny DeVito was kind of like a 
stepdad to that actress on set, I believe. I think so, yeah. I read about that. She, like, like she had uh, an interesting childhood. life. Yeah. yeah. I don't necessarily think it was anything, like, abusive. I, I feel like her father or her mom, someone, one of her parents, or both of her parents, yeah. were sick. Yeah, they were either sick or just, were, like, dirt poor. Yeah, it wasn't that they were, like, abusive or okay. neglectful or anything like that, but it was it was something that couldn't necessarily be helped. Okay. But, yeah, he, like, he definitely took care of her a lot. So it's different than the actress who voiced Ducky in The Land Before Time. Right. Who her, her dad, dad killed murdered her. Because he was a drunken schmuck. That's so sad. That was sad. Like, she was an up-and-coming young actress. Mm-hmm. Very young. She did All Dogs Go to Heaven yeah. and The Land Before Time. And that son of a bitch went... Well, on her gravestone, she has yep, yep, yep. Aww. Mm-hmm. That's cute. And, like... Honestly, I don't remember who did the voice of uh, Ducky in the sequels, though I try to forget the sequels. <laughs> I don't remember anything about the sequels. They're they're I more like, focused I on vaguely, s- like, sing-along songs yeah. than like an actual plot. Like they feel more like a TV show. Oh, this man, is he the... died and all his life came back. Yeah. I just noticed. I was like, man, how much life does this guy have? Doesn't it was matter. Like, if, you die, <laughs> if you die, he comes back. Fully regenerated. So I gotta find a pattern here, or I'm gonna be here all day. Come mm. down here! He's just way too fast. Hmm. Again, I, I feel like it would be... Damn it. Dead again. Bruh. He, like, flails about. Yep. Ugh, I am dead. Blah. Just like... <laughs> Very exaggerated. Ah, I see the light! Ah, the pain. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, there's a story behind that. So, Phil and I were shooting, like, a fantasy film. Mm-hmm. And, like, everything was going wrong. My mother would be like, cut! The hamster's in the video! And I'd be like, oh, for God's sakes. Finally, like, we're in the final battle. Damn, and my... My... <laughs> yeah. My cousin, who's holding the camera, goes... He's running a little low, boys. And Phil's just like, just end it. And I'm just like, but you gotta say the line. And, and he's just like, just end it. And I go, Satan, go to hell. And I stab him. And he goes, ah, the pain. Ugh. And he just falls over. And then right before the film cuts out, and that's the end of the tape, you hear Phil go, that last scene was horrible. And like that's the same movie where I'm just like I'm being a smart ass and he's like, see that mountain up there? The palace of the Dark Lord. All I see are trees. <laughs> I see nothing but trees. And like it was a shit show, but it's it's funny to think about. Cause just like everything that could have went wrong did. We were just trying to make a fun little fantasy adventure in the backyard. Or in my case, the front yard. Like my friends and I only ever made one movie. Ooh. And it was for a school project. Neat. And I'm trying to remember the actual title of the book, but it was like The Burning of Birmingham. Okay. I don't remember the actual title, but we did like a few scenes from that book. Okay. And I ended up getting a piece of metal. All right, in this my is the eye. best spot to be. <laughs> so, like, for half the movie, my eye is like swollen. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Well, that's no fun. There was, like, one scene that I feel like we killed it, and it was in my grandma's old house in Mm -hmm. the basement, and we had a fog machine. Okay, this is the spot. Just keep jumping. (laughs) He may have the high ground, but I have the axe of throwing. (laughs) But we were in the basement, and there was a fog machine, and in the book, it was like the kid was hallucinating that okay. like zombie hands were like reaching out for him ah. mm-hmm. from the like burnt church. Like he was in like the rubble of the church, and like the hands were reaching out for him. Ooh! So it's like the kid playing. Do you still have this? I I don't know. Probably. I don't Maybe. know. All right. Um, but like. I'd love to watch it. There. So. <laughs> Like the, 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 like the musical you're in where you're just in the background oh being like, like, hey. 
I had like two lines um, that you can't even hear on camera because it was just someone's dad like in the audience filming. Oh, um, bummer. But like the rest of our group was laying on the floor under the fog and like reaching their hands out. It just like in my memory looked really cool. Looked cool? Yeah. I'll take your word for it. We had some very interesting shots. Phil and I did like a vampire movie and to this day, we don't know what the hell it was, but he sits up and something goes by in the background. <laughs> and like, again, this wasn't like a high quality camera and the lighting was poor. Right. We had no idea what it was, but it was just like, was it you? It's just like, no, I was behind the camera it and was I was over vampire. here. So it's like, what the hell was, feels like what the hell was behind me? <laughs> <laughs> Cause something just went Roo! Yeah. But it was a short horror film called Hell is for the Dead where some teenagers come across an old abandoned vampire estate. And Phil was the vampire. <laughs> of course he was. Yeah. There was that, and we did a um, parody of Batman Begins called oh. Boxer Man. Oh, Lord. Where I, I wore boxers over my shorts, <laughs> and I was the superhero Boxer Man. And I didn't so know it was a like parody of Coil Batman Man. Begins until I realized that he was verbatim quoting Batman Begins. <laughs> And yeah, I was just like, like, you son of a bitch. There we go. What's your name? Wizards and warriors, she thou didn't... hast rescued thy nameless princess. She didn't get a name. Thy search hath ended. She is no one. Alrighty. So there we go. That was Wizards and Warriors. That was fun. I feel like I would be terrible at it. But. But you'd keep trying. I would keep trying. Yeah. Cause like, you have determination, I know that much. Like, you'll die quite a few times and it's just like, I'm getting this. Even though I'm gonna be mad the rest of the day, I'm getting this. Because like, ooh, and I get to put in my name. Cause I beat the game. Junior, it is you, Junior. Sir Junior. <laughs> I now dub the Sir Junior. There we go. And that's my score. For me, 1987. Okay. Yeah, 1987 was Wizards and Warriors. I want to say 88 or 89 was Castlevania. Okay. So I'll, I'll double check that in a little bit. But there we go, Wizards and Warriors. A happy birthday gift to my mom. I hope you enjoyed it, and happy we'll birthday. see you all in the next playthrough.